Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. I'm going to talk about one of my favorite things today and if you know me at all, you know what that is. It's crepe paper and crepe paper flowers. I want to share with you every single detail of what I know about crepe paper so that when you move forward in your crepe paper adventure, making flowers or plants or whatever it is, you know exactly what's out there and you understand crepe paper so that you can go with confidence. In 2018, my book was published called Crepe Paper Flowers, and this book was written specifically for the beginner flower maker. I go over every detail that anyone would want to know about crepe paper itself, the tools and the materials that I use, as well as how to assemble flowers. So I'll be covering some of this material in this video. The fun thing about doing this in a video format is I can actually show you and we can look at things as we talk and I think this will give you a better idea as you start your crepe paper adventure. So let's get started. For some of you, what you know about crepe paper is that it looks like this. And this is what a lot of us are familiar with. This is how we decorated our parties when we were kids. You remember this stuff? Yes, this is crepe paper, but the crepe paper that I'm talking about makes these gorgeous flowers that are right in front of me. We have different types of crepe paper and we'll be going over each of those types. So yes, absolutely, crepe paper flowers can look like this. And in addition to that, we also make a lot of crepe paper plants. I don't have a green thumb, so I really love having these plants in my home to decorate because they'll never die and they're also a perfect gift. So let's talk about the history of crepe paper. I've had so much fun researching this and some of the things I found out have been quite amazing. So crepe paper was actually used back in the 1900s. That's when it first hit its popularity. And from the research that I have found, most of the things made in the 1900s were actually dresses. They would make costumes and dresses that they would wear to parties. They would be, you know, somewhat disposable but they would actually do this. And as you can see here, I like to do a little bit of my own crepe paper dresses as well. I made both of these dresses for some trade shows and some TV appearances that I did, and it was just a really great material to work with. Now, that's not super practical unless, you know, you wanna have a disposable wedding dress. But later in the, in the 1900s, people started making crepe paper flowers, and there was a big trend in this where women would sit together and make them. They would use these flowers to put on graves oftentimes, and then they became more of something that you would use to decorate your home or even use for weddings or events like that. And then it seemed to fade away. In the 60s, maybe it started becoming less of a thing. And then what we knew about crepe paper was actually the crepe paper streamers that you see at parties. And it's just been recently in the last maybe five to 10 years that crepe paper has come back in and we're seeing more and more of it. And that's really exciting for us. I have here in front of me all of these old vintage crepe paper flower making books, although this one also does, you know, crepe paper dolls and baskets and shoes and whatnot. And these are published starting in the 1920s to the 1940s. This one's really cute. This one here is an actual costume book showing how you can make these different costumes out of crepe paper and I just absolutely adore this. So the interesting thing is that all of these books were published by a company called Denison and they were the manufacturer of crepe paper in the USA. They're now called Denicrepe, they're still in the US and they actually make that crepe paper streamer that I showed you and we'll talk a little bit more about them when we talk about all the different manufacturers of crepe paper. So let's start with our very simple and expensive crepe paper that you can get. This is crepe paper that's made in Mexico. We have crepe paper made in China, and then this is the crepe paper made in the US by Den Crepe. So the made in Mexico is actually something I just found, and it's extremely lightweight, it's inexpensive, it doesn't have a lot of stretch, and we're gonna talk about stretch later because that's important when you're making flowers. So this is a perfect crepe paper if you're wanting to do a really big display with puffy flowers, they don't need stretch or something for kids, this would be a good crepe paper for that and it's very inexpensive. This is a crepe paper that's made in China and they will often say Italian crepe paper and don't let that fool you. Make sure that when you look at your packaging, you know exactly where it's made because that right there will tell you the level of quality of your crepe paper. So the crepe paper made in China is not going to be the highest quality, but again, 
If you have something that you need a lot of quantity, this is a good crepe paper to use. You also will not get as much stretch out of this crepe paper. It's a lot lighter weight. It doesn't have a nice fine crinkle. I don't always know the dye that they use, so you never know if this is a non-toxic crepe paper unless it says so on the package. Now you'll notice that this one is extremely fine and it has a thin crepe to it, or this one has a heavier crepe to it. So you'll also want to note some of those things, and we'll go into that a bit later on where you would want to use each one. And then this is the uh, American Crepe Paper by Dinner Crepe, and it's also very lightweight. It does have a finer crinkle, more so than the Crepe Paper from Mexico. It doesn't have a lot of stretch, so again, this is perfect for children's crafts. All three of these are great for children's crafts or things where you don't need a lot of shape or you don't need to have that extra high quality. These are great for that. The next crepe paper that we'll talk about is the crepe paper made in Italy. So outside of China and Mexico, there are only three other actual factories that make crepe paper. And one of those is Dinner Crepe, in the USA, and then there's a factory in Italy, and there's a factory in Germany, and we'll finish up with that one and you'll see why. So next is the Italian crepe paper, and this is where your quality really goes up quite a few notches here. This is really beautiful crepe paper, high quality. They have an array of gorgeous colors, and what they're most known for as far as like the, the grade is the grams. They talk about grams a lot in the Italian crepe paper. And they have two different grams here. This one is a 140 gram and this one is a 180 gram. It's absolutely beautiful. They have great colors. The stretch is like 250%. I don't know that for sure, but I'm gonna guess on that. And it's just really lovely to work with. It has a very deep creping to it, which works great for some of the larger flowers um, and also for something that needs a bit more of that texture. So the 180 and the 140 are very similar. They might stretch a little bit different, and I know that there are some other weights out there that you can check out. They also have this beautiful foil paper, and it has the gold on one side and then this brown on the other side. Now they call this a double-sided, but don't get that confused with the German double-sided that I'm gonna show you next. But the other thing I wanted to point out in the Italian crepe paper that is different than the German crepe paper is that they do have these lines and these are cut lines. They were actually made because this is used by florists where they'll wrap their bouquet and this is a cut line so they can cut it straight. In the Italian crepe paper, they all right now have these cut lines that might change in the future, we'll see. But in the German crepe paper, we've actually taken those out. When I first started making crepe paper flowers, I did use the Chinese crepe paper because that's what I had available. And I made them and I was like, ma, they're okay. I'm not really super excited about it. And then I was introduced to the Italian crepe paper and that's when things started to change and that's when I started to fall in love with making flowers out of crepe paper. I was then introduced to the German crepe paper. And here's the thing about the German crepe paper company. Remember I was talking about Dena Crepe or Denison, the ones that manufactured the American crepe and then also wrote those books back in the 20s and 30s? Well, they also own the company in Germany. So as you can see, it's kind of a small crepe paper family out there and I'm really excited that they invited me to be part of that. So when we started talking, I wanted to create a line that was the ultimate crepe paper for paper flower makers. And this is what we came up with. The first thing that we introduced was this extra fine crepe paper is what we call it. And this is a very lightweight crepe paper that's similar to what you would see, you know, from Mexico or even the American crepe paper. But what the difference that you can see in this one is that it has 150% stretch. So that's a lot of stretch for a lightweight crepe paper. We also have some beautiful custom colors that we made. And this paper is, is very much like, almost fabric-like. Um, it's a high quality, it doesn't tear quite as easily as the uh, cheaper brands, so this was the very first crepe paper that we came up with. 
they also had this beautiful double-sided crepe paper. Now this is the double-sided that I'm talking about that's different than that foil and the brown double-sided. And this is where they take two of these extra fine crepe papers and they glue them together. And you can see there's a slight difference in color. So we have a whole line of this double-sided crepe paper. And again, for the right flowers, this is the perfect crepe paper. And together we thought they worked really well and the color palettes were just beautiful. So once we got going on these two crepe papers, we decided, yes, it was time to bring in the heavy crepe paper to simulate somewhat of what the Italian heavy crepe paper was, the 180 gram or the 140 gram. And this one is actually right in the middle. It's about a 160 gram if you were to compare it, the exact roll size to the exact roll size. And it also has the 250% stretch. So it has that really nice deep stretch. And also we wanted to make sure that our creping was a bit softer, that it wasn't quite as toothy as that what we had been using before. We wanted it to be easier to you know, handle with your fingers and we asked them to take out those lines that go across so we don't have any of those cross lines. Now, you notice, this is a much shorter crepe paper roll than the Italian crepe paper rolls and we actually started with the long 20 inch roll but discovered that the shorter rolls ship better, they're easier for people to store, and so they give us a little bit more opportunity for variety in our tin packs. So we went ahead and did them as a 10 inch instead of a 20 inch for multiple reasons. And we feel like if you wanna make a big, huge crepe paper flower, Italy is the place to buy your crepe paper. But for most paper flowers, this is plenty large enough. A couple years ago, I was actually able to go to the factory in Germany and watch the crepe paper being made. We are always trying to, you know, talk about adding some new colors or adjusting the colors. And so they wanted me to see exactly the process of how they come up with their dyes. And I have to tell you, it's, it's really amazing. It was like going to old world. There's, you know, these vats and someone actually pours in the powders and mixes them. These are what I would consider almost handmade papers, at least the colors are. So coming up with colors is a very intricate process and you have to kind of work back and forth. So hopefully we'll be doing more of that soon. And then we were able to watch this crepe paper go from a big, huge roll of white paper and go through the machine being dyed, being creped, being cut, and then into these little packets of crepe paper as well as it, as it comes off the machine. And that was really exciting. So. You know, I have a lot of love for this crepe paper because it does feel so close to my heart and I know where it comes from. And I know that it's really clean, it's non-toxic. Your kids can use this. So, you know, all crepe papers, absolutely, whatever you have, use them. And of course, this is the one I love. So now that you've seen the crepe paper, let's talk about what you can make with them and why I might choose a different style of crepe paper for different flowers. So this here is our gorgeous peony. I absolutely love this. And this one is made with the heavy crepe paper, which would be this one right here. And we chose this crepe paper for this flower because of the stretch. We wanted that really beefy stretch where you could get the nice cup on the petals. And also we wanted the weight that would hold the petals into place. And that would be perfect for that heavy crepe paper paper. So both of these irises, both the lavender and the white, are made with the extra fine crepe paper. And we chose this paper because we wanted that very lightweight papery effect. And we were able to get the shape of these by adding wires inside. And this is a technique that I can teach you later. And these both, you can see there's a lot of ruffle, there's a lot of texture. So this is a perfect paper for something like this. So then we have our double-sided crepe paper, and as you can see, it is so gorgeous. I would like to use this crepe paper if I'm making a rose or a gardenia or even something like this magnolia. There's a lot of weight to it, so it holds a big petal very nicely, but as you can see, it just looks like this gorgeous, velvety, smooth petal. And the leaves of this magnolia are also made from a double-sided crepe paper. However, this is one that we made ourselves, and I'll teach you that in a later segment as well. So now let's go talk about the tools and the materials that I like to use when I'm making crepe paper flowers. Mm -hmm. 
If I were to pick six tools that are a must have for the new crepe paper flower artist, this would be them. So of course the first thing you'll need is a really good pair of scissors and these are the Fiskar scissors. You can pick your own. I love these of course because they are my Leah Griffith scissors, uh, but you can pick your own scissors that fits right in your hand. These also have a, a non-stick blade, which I love. Another thing that is a must, and this I would say buy this right here, and these are the little tiny micro tip scissors, and they look like kid scissors, but they're not. They are so sharp, and what I love about these is they have a very pointed tip, but they're also thin. So when you're making those little teeny tiny uh, stamen right in the middle, and you want to cut those fine, this is the perfect scissor for that. So I highly recommend that. Another tool that I think is a must have is this curling tool. And this is something that Fiskar has made for us as well. If it's right in the palm of your hand, you use a combination of your thumb and your fingers and the edge to make the beautiful curl of your crepe paper. So if you can get your hands on one of these, this is a really good one to have. Then you're gonna need a pair of needle nose pliers and wire cutters. I used to have a needle nose plier, a wire cutter. So I asked Fiskars to come up with just an all in one. This is about a jewelry size. So this is perfect for cutting one stem. If you are cutting multiple wires, you'll want some heavy duty wire cutters, but I use these every day. This one is optional, but I do use it all the time. And this is a pinking shear. This is also something that you would use for sewing. So I really prefer buying a pinking shear that's the sewing grade. It's a higher end pinking shear. This is a Fiskars. And this is where I cut the edge of some of my crepe paper where I don't want a blunt edge. This is a, a good investment. Then we're talking about hot glue guns. And generally, I will always use a low temperature hot glue gun. I prefer these smaller hot glue guns than the big massive ones just because they're easier to hold in my hand. And they also give a nice little fine point of glue. Low temperature, or if you feel like it, you could go with a high temperature. And this one is my absolute favorite of the high temperatures, again, because it has a really nice fine point. So either one of these, it's up to you. Low temperature, high temperature, maybe have one of each. Though I do love using my hot glue gun, my other favorite glue that I probably use about half of the time is this Turbo Tacky Glue. And I particularly like this bottle where it's upside down and the lid's on the bottom so everything's always ready. Another material that I'll use to kind of keep things together is floral tape and I have some of it unpacked here. You can see floral tape is a little different. It's not really sticky like tape, and it does um, take a certain technique on how to use it properly, which I will have in a future segment, but I'll give you a little example here. I'll tear this off. It does tear easily. It's actually a tissue paper that's been creped, and then it has a wax finish, and it stretches so that you can wrap it around your stems. Now I want to say, not all floral tapes are the same, and I really highly suggest if you're going to buy a floral tape, make sure that you buy something that is made for florists. If you get a craft floral tape in some of the big box stores, I have found often that the wax is too hard and it just doesn't stick and it will fall off my stem. So get something that is you know, like four florists, like a Flora tape, that's the brand, or even the Leah Griffith tape is also a high quality brand that is used by other florists as well. So we have six colors in our pack. They come in twos, or you can probably find some other colors as well. I like to have variety, so this is good. Another material that I use almost every single time I make a flower is floral wire. So these are my four favorite floral wires. I love the paper covered. I found using just a wire or using uh, the fabric covered, they don't work as well as the paper covered for several reasons. So this one here is a stem, we call it a stem wire, and it has an actual little bit of padding on it as well that it's covered with the paper. And I like this because it gives a nice natural looking stem for your flowers. Another wire that I use a lot is this 18 gauge, and this one also has a paper covering on it. It's a bit stiffer so that you can have a heavier flower head and it won't uh, fall over too much. So that one I use a lot. And then these are two other wires that I use quite a bit. And they're either a 24 or 26 gauge, and they're also paper covered. This one is white. I'll use this between petals. You saw the iris earlier, and the way that the iris petals were held into place, this is actually glued between the two layers of crepe paper. So that's why I like having the white because it works with all of the lighter colors. And then here's the green, and that one, 
I use in darker petals or also in leaves. So these are the four wires that we have in stock in our studio and this will cover pretty much anything that we need. Another material that we keep on hand in our studio are balls. So we used to keep foam balls in our studio that we'd use in the center of flowers and that helps shape the centers or gives us bulk where we need it. But recently we decided that we wanted to go foam free and we found these beautiful cotton spun balls that are made in Germany. These come in all different sizes and some different shapes as well, but we find these are the three sizes that we use the most. In addition to that, we also use little tiny wooden beads and these beads might be something that you'd see inside of a peony or this might be the center of a wild rose blossom and these are great to work with. You can paint them as well. Oftentimes we'll just cover them with crepe. So then there's the topic of adding color to your crepe paper and here are a few different materials that we use. Although there are more out there, this is a great place to start. So we have this set of pan pastels and this one is actually a Leah Griffith set. Although there are so many different pan pastels that you can buy, you can get them in single pots. You can find those at some art supply stores, including Blick, they carry them. But this particular set are the seven that we use the most. And this set actually comes with three of these sponges that you can use to apply the pastel onto your crepe paper. And I'll just show you a little example here. The pastel is a dry medium. You can actually screw them right on top of each other just like this, or you can keep them in the pan if you want to. So it's a dry medium. It's almost like makeup, like an eyeshadow or a powder blush, and it has a lot of tint to it. These are originally manufactured for fine artists to do pastel drawings, but since we found that they work so well with crepe paper, we actually incorporate them into a lot of our projects. So you can use the sponge, just dip it in and then rub that onto the crepe paper. Or you can also use a soft paintbrush and you just dip that in and paint it right onto your crepe and that works great. So the pan pastels are great for adding a color in either an ombre or a gradation that you want to sort of soften out. But if you want any tips that are painted on your stamen or you want some dots on your petals of your tiger lily, we found that markers work really well. And we often will use an alcohol base, but you can also use a water-based marker. Blick Studio has a great brand that's pretty inexpensive, or you can use the higher end brand like the Copic or Tombow or whichever you find that works for you. I like to use often the, the point end of it. They, these have two different points. So we have more of a paintbrush point and then we have a chisel point. And oftentimes I end up using this point because it gives me a little bit finer look that I want. Another thing that we use a lot on our stamen tips or sometimes if we need that little splash of color is just a simple acrylic craft paint. Again, this is a Blick brand, but you can get this pretty much anywhere. And if, if you're using that, sometimes you'll need a paintbrush. Oftentimes I'll just put that in a little pot and then dip my rolled stamen in to get that bald tip. So I keep these all on hand at all times so that whatever crepe paper flower I'm working on, I can test and see which material or which medium works best to get the look that I want. Also, another thing that we use a lot in our studio is a colored paper for leaves. And we often use this lighter text weight paper because that seems to work really well for us. You can use a Canson paper or even a cardstock on some of your leaves. But again, something that we always keep on hand for those times that we want a specific look, especially if it's a more detailed leaf. You can find the links below for the crepe paper, for the tools that I've shown you, and these extra materials that I have shown you right below, so go check them out. So if you enjoyed this video and you would like more, we're launching a course that will be released four times a year. So there's a link below, run down, put your name on our list so you'll be the first to know when we're launching it and you can join us for the full course. We're gonna teach you every single thing we know about crepe paper flower making. So if you found this video and you're not yet a member over at leahgriffiths.com, come on over, sign up. We have so much fun. We have a monthly member make where we all make the same flower. We do a live video for that. And then we're always teaching new flowers, new techniques throughout the month. So if you are into this crepe paper flower thing, you're gonna wanna be part of the crepe paper revival and hang out with us.